Hello Gecko fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko. Now I've always said in my videos that baby geckos are just the cutest things in the whole world. Well today we're going to look at one that maybe isn't the cutest. gecko fan you've seen a lot of baby geckos let me know in the comment below which you think are the cutest baby geckos here are some of my all-time personal favorite baby geckos leopard geckos crested geckos knobtail geckos cave geckos and what i think is the cutest baby geckos from the genus periodora about a year ago, I purchased a pair of helmeted geckos. Now, they're really super cute. This is Gekonia chisalia. Let's go ahead and take a look at a clip from that video. Helmeted geckos occur in northern Africa. Now, they're pretty small, but they do need some room in their enclosure. And I'll show you the setup. This one's a little antsy. I'm going to hold him over get this. Now I'll do a setup video in the future and we'll take a look at that setup and I'll talk about uh, how I have it set up and some of the requirements of these helmeteds at that point. And here's the other one. And let's see if you agree with me that they are super, super cute. Now as you know, I don't record additional videos until I'm pretty confident I can take care of the geckos and ultimately produce babies. That's my ultimate guide to know for sure that I'm caring for these geckos as best as I possibly can. With so many geckos out there, why am I keeping helmeted geckos? Why should you keep helmeted geckos? Well, let me talk about a few of the reasons. First, this is a small gecko. They only get to be about three and a half to four inches, so they require very, very little room, a very small enclosure. As well, this is a very calm gecko. Now I say calm, but sometimes they can kind of freak out a little bit and give me that bulldog kind of attitude. Not a lot of people are keeping this gecko, so there's that rarity kind of factor involved as well. And just look at that face. Isn't that the cutest little face you've ever seen? And for me personally, years and years ago, I caught an article from Gary Hammond of Ridge and Valley. Yes, this is an homage, homage, homage. This is a tribute to Gary and his work with the helmeted geckos. I'm going to throw a link down to that article down in the description so you can go there and take a look as well. And I'm going to throw a bunch of uh, links to other websites showing more information on these wonderful, wonderful geckos. Now, let's talk a little bit about the history and taxonomy of these wonderful little geckos. These little geckos are from the Morocco and Senegal regions. These are rocky, arid areas on the western coastal areas of the Sahara Desert. Now, you can find these geckos on rock outcrops peeking out of the little rock crevices. They love the microclimates within the climates of these areas. Now there's a really special deal with the care of these animals, and I'm going to talk more about that in detail at the end of this video, but it concerns the fact that fog rolls into these areas in the evening and hydrates the whole area. But let's go ahead and talk about the characteristics of these helmeted geckos. It's a heavier bodied animal, and I already talked about their size of being about three and a half to four inches. Now you can distinguish males by the pores and also the hemipenal bulge. This is a nocturnal gecko. They're more active at night than in the daytime. Kind of like me, except they're not watching YouTube videos until 2 in the morning. Here's a really cool note about these animals, and this is per John Boone's actual collection data. The coastal form of helmeted geckos were smaller and quite common, whereas the inland forms living in the valleys between the mountains were substantially larger, perhaps 150 to 200% larger 
in overall mass. Now, let's go ahead and talk about their setups. A 10 gallon is actually fine for these little geckos. A 15 gallon is great. A 20 gallon is like the Hearst Castle. You don't know what the Hearst Castle is. Okay, so it's like J-Lo's mansion. You give them a 20 gallon lung and they'll just be as pleased as punch. These geckos love their hides. Remember I mentioned that they love to scamper into these uh, rock crevices in their natural habitat? Well, you need to provide as many hides as you possibly can. And the more, the better. And the difference in the hides, the more difference in the hides that you can provide, the better. If you're providing rock crevices, make sure that those rocks are very, very stable and won't fall over. My absolute favorite hide is an overturned flower saucer with a little V notch cut into it. You can provide hides both on the warm side and on the cool side. As well, this is a sand-based gecko. Provide about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of a good sand, like a reptilite sand. Yes, I said sand. Don't judge me. My favorite sand is reptilite. It's just a really nice sand to use because it's a, almost a dust-free sand. You could keep yours on a play sand that you would find at a home improvement store, but I don't. As well, I've read that some people mix their sand with peat moss or a, a koi fiber. Again, I don't. Now, how about temperatures? You should have a warm spot of about 20 to 25 percent of the enclosure at 90 degrees, that's 35 degrees Celsius. The rest of the enclosure can be an ambient temperature of about 75 degrees to 80 degrees, and that's 24 to 27 degrees Celsius. Now, as this is a fringe desert type of gecko, you want to make sure that you provide a drop in temperatures at night of about 5 to 8 degrees. They will, they will really, really enjoy that. I provide heat by using FluxWatt on the bottom of the enclosure, but you can put a light canister on top with an incandescent light as well, as long as you maintain a warm spot of about 25% of the enclosure. Make absolutely sure that you have a really, really good temperature gauge so that you're accurate with these temperatures. As I say in a lot of videos, UVB isn't necessary for nocturnal geckos, but it's welcomed. Well, with helmeted geckos, I would strongly suggest you have some source of UVB, UVB lighting in the enclosure. Let's talk about feeding your helmeted geckos. Now, one note that you want to be aware of is that they are ferocious and aggressive feeders. You want to make sure that you give them the right amount of food because they will tend to overeat. Helmeted geckos aren't really fussy eaters. We feed them mealworms, crickets, small dubias, Make sure you give them a food item that's about the length of the width of their head. Now, the ultimate experience for me is breeding geckos and seeing babies. And that's absolutely true with the helmeted geckos. Now, you want to know the real secret to breeding helmeted geckos? Well, there really isn't any secret. If you keep them healthy and happy, you will see breeding activity and you ultimately will see eggs and hopefully you'll see babies. Once I have happy, healthy, helmeted geckos, I start looking for eggs, and I look for eggs once every about two weeks or so, and I'll sift through the sand with my fingers gently until I find eggs. Once I find eggs, I put them into a bottle cap with some dry material, and then put that into a deli cup with some moisture material. Then I put it into, into an incubator, and I incubate it around 80 to 82 degrees, and hopefully, Hopefully, at some point, you get baby helmeted geckos. Now, you tell me, are these baby helmeted geckos cute, or are there other cuter baby geckos? Here's something that really surprised me about baby helmeted geckos. They are small. Be prepared. They are smaller than I thought that they should be. And let me tell you, I have worked with some very, very small geckos in my time. To work with baby helmeted geckos, everything has to be small. From a small enclosure, to small hides, to a small food dish, to a small water dish, and absolutely positively, small foods. We feed teeny tiny feeder insects to our baby helmeted geckos. Anything from a micro mealworm, to peanut beetles, to ultimately small crickets. 
Now I mentioned before that I would offer a pro tip on helmeted geckos to make sure that you care for them even better. That pro tip is to miss them. Remember I mentioned earlier on that the fog rolls in and covers the rocks and naturally hydrates these animals? You need to do the same thing for your helmeted geckos, at, if not every day, every other day. Now what works really, really well for us is an automated misting system, and I'll throw a link up on top on one that I built ourselves, a do-it-yourself project. But ultimately you need to mist your helmeted geckos to make sure that they are hydrated in your care. Now seriously, I really do think baby helmeted geckos are cute. I think there's some other cuter baby geckos. I'll throw a link up to some very rare geckos that I think are just super, super cool as babies. But you let me know in the comments below if you think helmeted geckos, helmeted gecko babies are cute. Thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Now you can distinguish males by the bulge. Now you can distinguish males by the pores and also the 